Okay, so we're ready to start the, we're in 88 BC, and from this point on, we will move continuously in the game. You can recruit whatever you want now in the recruit box, not this section yet, and of course not the promotion, but right here in the recruit box can be recruited. Clients will work the way they work, tribal centers, stuff like that. Now this event in 88 BC officially starts our game. No more practicing. I don't know if I mentioned this, but in 104, Marius became the supreme leader. Well, he was stripped of those powers when Mithridates started attacking over in Asia Minor. And the supreme leader power was given to Sola. So Sola is the supreme power. He sets up in Salonia, right here, and Sola was given six legions, and they're all going to be veteran, all purple, six legions, and two auxiliary and impetus to head over to Asia to deal with Mithridates. Well, when he left, Marius uh, started killing senators, bribing senators, and squashing Sola's appointment. And so Sala turned around so fast before Marius even knew what was happening, and Marius had to run to Africa. And Sala had to secure Rome. He marched on Rome for the first time, and then went back and started to head to Mithridates. So in our game, this is where we set up. Sala's force is right there. Uh, Sala will have these six legions, two auxiliary, the impetus. And also there was a... A recruit legion on Salone already which is allowed to move now so he actually has a seven legions and then uh, everything becomes purple as you see it here on the board this is what he starts with everything else remains red Marius is not a supreme leader any longer now he's allowed to have two fleets one recruit one veteran and Nobody else in Rome. That's what he has in Rome. You look on the calendar that I'm using, it'll tell you what commanders to add and what not to add. Well, in this, we're adding Cinna. So Marius gets Cinna. Cinna will set up in Milan, Middleadium, and he's basically going to have the council forces. He has two legions, two auxiliaries, and a supply impetus. And that's the setup and how this event starts in 88 BC. And also at this point, we use every rule in the game, the advanced rules, all of them. And on the stratagem card, all the stratagems are used. Both sides get uh, four political, two agents, three military each. And then there's, if you look on the card in the expansion, uh, card for stratagems you have stratagem number one and number two and those you get when you do certain things you can read that on the card so everything's in use we don't roll for events yet just don't do that yet but in the civil war you're going to roll for rest republica you you will definitely roll for that and use all the rules as you please now, I've already discussed that you can only have 25 total Roman legions and 25 auxiliary legions. No matter if the Romans are together or separate, that you can never have more than that. Now, the terms loyal Romans and rebel Romans are used loosely for both Roman players. They're interchangeable. You will have purple Romans on board and red loyal units on board. Sometimes they will be in a civil war and sometimes they will be together. We use red Romans for player one and purple Romans for player two. No matter if the Roman player is together or not, you can never go over that legion strength. The Roman player that controls more cities than the other Roman player is allowed to have the 15 Roman legions and 15 auxiliaries, while the other Roman player will be allowed to have 10 auxiliary and 10 legions. That's a total of 25. Remember, the Roman player with the more cities is allowed to have 15 legions plus the 15 auxiliaries. The Roman player with less cities can only have 10 legions. Now, this only matters during the Civil War. Let's say in a Civil War one Roman had control of more Roman cities than the other Roman who had less, therefore he only had 10 legions on the board. 
But the Roman who had more cities loses cities, that, so he no longer has the greater number of cities. Now, he can only have a maximum number of 10 legions, and the other player who only had 10 legions can now go up to 15. So immediately, excess legions are immediately removed from the board and put back in the recruit box. And now one side can build the 15, the other side 10. That's how it's going to work in the Civil War, depending on who controls more cities. Now the counter mix. The Red Roman will have two Legati uh, recruits, two Legati veterans. One of those veterans is going to have a leader rating of 1, and it can be upgraded to a Legati veteran leader rating of 2. He will have 3 Impetus, 3 Engineers, 4 Fleets, all recruit class, which can be upgraded to veterans class. The Purple Roman can have 3 Legati recruit class and 1 Legati veteran. So they're both getting 4 Legates. The 1 Legati veteran for the Purple leader rating of 1 can be upgraded to a Legati veteran leader rating of two. He could also have three engineers, three impetus, two fleets that are recruit class that can be promoted to veterans, but also a veteran class fleet that can be recruited as a veteran straight out of the recruit box and it doesn't need to be upgraded. And this is just because of our counter mix. Now the red has four political, three military, two agent strategy markers, and purple is the same. Remember, when Rome is not in a civil war, stratagems are basically what the red side has only. You don't use purple stratagems, just what the red has. Always four political, three military, and two agents. But you can now recruit all the legate for both sides, and the total for engineers is six, and six impetus, and seven fleets when the Roman units are, are fighting as one. But when a civil war breaks out, you split these. Now after one day, after 1 AD, additional legions may be recruited depending on the cities or areas that you control. And we'll get into that later. Right now, we're going to start the first civil war and the first Mithridates war starts. And all the rules are now used. Sola is elected supreme leader to deal with Mithridates, and he starts to march to Asia. And he has six legions and two auxiliary legions with him. He sets up in Solane, and you can see here the purple cities, these four. That's all he has on his side. You turn them to purple. That's all he has. So therefore, Sola has lesser Roman cities. He can only recruit up to ten legions and ten auxiliary. He also has Matillus Impetus unit. Another thing where I'm going to make clear is when you take a city for a Roman to retake a Roman city doesn't give you any points. Okay, if a Roman loses a city to a enemy client state or barbarians, then that player, the barbarian of the client state, is going to get two for the city points. Now when it's a civil war, you, uh, the, both sides do not get points for taking cities. However, the rebel side will get 10 for taking Rome. And then if the, they own it, and then uh, uh, you know, whenever you start an invasion or civil war, whichever side has this, if he loses it, the other side's going to get 10 points, whoever took it. But as far as Romans taking Roman cities, nobody gets any points. Only the barbarians get two points for taking Roman cities. Now, Romans will get two points each for taking barbarian cities or any client cities over in this area. So that's our game. I'm not going to sit here and go step by step of what how we're going to play because you've already seen it. What I will do is take about three or four turns here. Because it's going to take that long for Sola to get around here because he's just going straight after Rome. And we'll see how long it takes him. The only thing that will change here is the rules on the rest Republica table. So, you know, somebody can become a dictator or a council or anything like that. And it gives them extra advantages. So, we will start. And I'll come back after four turns and we'll see what happens. The first forced march, I did a forced march, meaning he moved twice. So I went to there, 
Second turn, I felled it. Third turn, I went to there. Four, sorry, it took me four turns and I got here. In four turns... Now, once Civil War is started, there's going to be one unit that will be considered the guy trying to come in and conquer Rome. Therefore, he's trying to march on Rome. The defender of Rome, he's allowed to now move Roman units into Rome. And even though no Roman units can still be created in the city of Rome unless you have that little asterisk on a unit. You'll see that some have them. Those are guard units. They can be recruited in Rome. In Rome. Any other units have to be created outside of Rome. So what I did is I took Cinna on Marius's faction, put him in another city, put Marius in another city, collected some Romans, and then went to Rome before Sulla got there. And now we have this battle that's going to take place. And he got... Mithridates now on we're starting the fourth turn he hasn't gone yet but he's already taken this Roman city and he's laying siege to Paragama Tigranius is here so I mean Asia is getting gobbled up a little bit so you can see as Sola was marching back to Rome Mithridates was go is gobbling up Asia, and that's basically what's happening. But Sulla has to go take care of Marius. Marius, originally, you know, in history, ran because he wasn't prepared. However, here, we're not going to do that. And we're going to fight. The question is, should uh, Marius stay inside Rome and let Sulla lay siege to it? And I, uh, Romans can do a formal siege and then assault. So. I decided with Marius to come out of Rome and attack Sola. So we have a battle taking place at Rome. And if Marius loses, well, he just retreats and Sola can enter Rome. And then as Marius, I can back up, run to Sicily, take my fleets and keep running. And Sola really won't be able to chase Marius because of Mithridates gobbling up all the territory in Asia and then he'll eventually march over into uh, Macedonia so that's the game plan we're gonna go for a battle and one thing to note here with Maria is you can see that white marker it's a senator marker because he's been rolling on the rest Republic table and he got to be a senator Sola hasn't had that such luck yet to get anything I, FYI on this battle, Marius did have three military stratagems. So he's going to play them all right now. That puts him at a five leader rating. Sola's only got a three. Um, so Marius gets two added to the red dice here for who gets the tactical leader rating. rating. Oh my gosh. And he only went to a three. So Sola did win that anyway. So. I'm going to go through the battle. Uh, I might as well videotape it. So as far as archers go, it's 4, 8, 12 for Sola. Here we go. 5. On a 12. And 2 are lost. And they have to take them off right now. And we're going to take off the supply unit. So supply units destroyed. And now this side will shoot back. And we have the fleet shooting. Five. We have a nine with Marius. Jeez. Nothing. Or oh, it's a check. A supply check. Now all these guys are veterans except him. Yeah, he has three. Matillus can make one a veteran. And Sola can make. So two of these are veterans. I'm not going to protect any of these. So, wow. One I don't think is a great roll. So, on a roll of a one, veterans, as well as the recruits, obviously, all become disrupted. And the entire Sola force is disrupted. Therefore, they can't fight anymore 
in the th even in the third round and they're going to lose this battle so solo loses the battle and he has to withdraw one hex i don't know if i mentioned the 10 civis unit there paragama asia is a roman client uh state so but there's no leader here they can't do anything and you know that's the way it's set up so as Mithridates comes over Mithridates now he demanded tribute from the civis unit and he got it so it's another tan unit there which you know I'm out of tan units uh, let me see if I can take one from I'm going to take one from back here So this tan unit, and we can keep track on a piece of paper, now belongs to Pontius. Now the troops inside, when the civis re, uh, changes size, may revolt. We have to check that out. What happened over here is very interesting. Now we've gone four turns. We went, it looks like Marius' gamble paid off. We went for the big battle. Sola's troops had to take a check. And you take a check for the entire force, and I rolled a one. And they all were disrupted. So they couldn't fight the last two rounds. They ended up losing the battle. So he had to back up. Marius' turn went. So when his turn came, he had no more military strategies. And he didn't really want to get in a battle and fight it again. So he just spent a political point for the Res Republica table. And he lost. He rolled a 12. What happens is he lost the senator. So he doesn't have the senator. The senator wasn't doing anything for him yet. It would have. If Marius would have ran, he could have still been rolling on that table when he was a senator. But he had to remove it. He's no longer a senator. And then he spent another political because uh, they recruited. And then at the end of his turn, they all advanced to the available. So he had no military stratagems on his turn because he played them in Solas. So... Just part of the rules. But he's not going to attack. He's content holding there. He's he's inviting Sola to come in again. We'll see what happens. But The rest of this, I'm, again, we don't have to show you everything we're doing here. You already have seen how the game is played. But for the time of the First Civil War, you've seen how we kind of fought with Sola and Marius. Well, this battle went on for a couple years until 86 BC where we removed Marius. It's all on my calendar. What leaders get removed and put on. Marius was removed because he was that's the year he died. He was old age so we take him off and you add Marius the younger. He's the one that continued this civil war. But Marius the younger only has a leader rating of one and we had to make our own counter like I do on some and Sola was still a leader rating of three so Sola started to slowly push Marius the younger out. Marius ended up running to Africa, uh, Cinna ended up running to uh, Spain, and then Sola was able to turn his attention back to Mithridates, who has taken all these Roman cities and Asian cities over in Anatolia area, and then could eventually move into Macedonia. So Sola turns back around and is going to head to uh, uh, Mithridates. However, before he does that, he wants to start taking over more cities than the red player. Because if he does that, he can start recruiting uh, more than 10 legions. Remember, whatever Roman player has more cities, they can recruit the 15 legion count. The other one can only recruit, recruit 10. So that's what Sola's after. So he finished going down into an entire Italian peninsula in Sicily, taking all the Roman cities, and then headed over to uh, the Macedonian area and continue to take all Roman cities there. And you can see uh, Matilius was even sent to uh, Massilia to take that. This put uh, Sola's force at uh, more cities than the red. So now the purple is recruiting 15 legions and 15 auxiliary. The red can only recruit 10 legions and 10 auxiliary. And so the game went on for a couple more years, and 
we get to 84 BC and now we add Pompey. So Sulla and Pompey, now Pompey is not a supreme leader yet and there's a counter here that will show there's two Pompey counters per, that are purple. One he doesn't have the wreath and the other one he does. So we use the one without the reef. He's not a supreme leader yet, but he is involved in these wars. And then we've gone to 80 BC and we remove Sola because he retires. He's old age and so we take him off. And so during this whole time, this is how the game progressed. Purple has more cities. He's starting to head back to Anatolia. Pompey is, and Red is gathering forces in Spain or Africa to get ready to fight Purple again. Now, because the Mithridatic Wars were added in by me by, by events, we do have special rules because there was upheaval, there was dynasty uh, struggles going on in Pontius with Mithridates, so there's a special special rule when the Roman legions returned when Sola returned to Anatolia they immediately made a peace because uh, Marius the younger and Cynic and came back to Rome so Sola had to go back and deal with that so there was peace made so we recreate that so basically at this point the war with Mithridates will end if the Roman uh, either supreme leader or its highest leader raiding leader and five Roman legions enter any Asian territory meaning the Anatolia area and they spend a military and an agent stratagem the Mithridates makes peace and the war ends for the next two years there's no Mithridates war so that is where Pompey who is the leading general right now is heading and that's why you see the board like this we're going to stop that. Now, while he's going over there, uh, Marius the Younger and Cinna are going to try to take advantage of his absence and start fighting Purple again and get to Italy. And that's what you're going to see carry on here in this game. But I just wanted to point out, we are at 78 BC right now. Now, in just normal game terms, we have gone... Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We've gone 17 game turns. So in these three videos you watch, we've gone 17 game turns. In reality, though, we've really gone 29 years in history. And remember, we skip years. It's all on the calendar what years I'll skip and what you go to. We've really played 29 years of this game. Remember, we're trying to cover... 300 years of this game and we've already done 29 and there's a lot of times where we skip the years so you won't be playing 300 turns but whatever so right now I'm ending this video at 78 BC and that's the situation uh, purple is going to try to end this war with Mithridates uh, the Roman red player is going to try to come back and take over more Roman cities again and and we'll go on and see how long this second civil war uh, takes place.